Seasons greetings gamers, this is Raz from Crush on Pixels, and I am handicapped. <laughs> uh, Ta-da! A while back I made a video discussing PC games and controllers, and in that video I briefly brought up the fact that I am handicapped. And even though I only briefly brought it up, it is actually something that is constantly on my mind as a handicapped gamer. And it turns out that it's not just interesting for me, but some of you find it interesting as well. So I thought that this would be a great way for me to share my point of view with all of you. So to start, I thought I'd discuss my earliest gaming memories, and how I've over the years had to adapt to different control methods. The earliest console game I can remember playing, and keep in mind my memory isn't perfect, is a game called Tecmo World Wrestling for the NES. Now, I didn't actually have an NES of my own at this time, so I had to go to a friend's house to play games. This just happened to be one of the few games that my friend had, and we enjoyed the heck out of it. The game was a blast. Me and my friend would have so much fun beating each other up, throwing each other to the ground, bouncing off the ropes, and so on, but a few things about the game did seem weird, or at least out of place. For starters, the music. Don't get me wrong, the music was good, but it seemed so out of place. It's a lot better suited for something like an action game or a shooter. Tell me the events on screen right now match the intensity of the music. Another thing that was odd about this game is that you had this exercise mini-game. You could do squats, sit-ups, or push-ups to increase your power between matches. The problem is that they're no fun. They all play the exact same way. You push a button as fast as possible before the timer runs out. That's it. Even at that age, I was kind of bewildered as to why a feature like that made it into the game. I mean, the power increase could really help you, so you kind of felt obligated to do it even though it wasn't fun. That's kind of like saying, here's a beautiful pork roast that looks absolutely delicious. But before you eat it, you have to shove it up your ass. You know, to make it better. And finally, the characters. I played this back before I knew about fake rehearsed wrestling. I had never even heard of Hulk Hogan at that time, or any of the wrestlers I'm now familiar with. So when it came to the lineup, the options seemed really weird. What is up with the mullet? Um... Did this guy forget to wear sunblock at the beach? What the fuck? Yeah, like I said, this was before I knew about wrestling, including Mexican wrestling. So when I saw this for the first time, it made absolutely no sense. Did they have tiger wrestling? Enough about this game. I did eventually get an NES of my own, along with a handful of games like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Tiger Heli. <laughs> And even though those games weren't very good, they did help me get used to the concept of a controller. Which brings me to my main topic, controllers. I'll start out simple by talking about the NES controller. This was the epitome of simplicity. Even someone who had as fucked up arms as I do could easily handle it. Up, down, left, right, A and B. It really couldn't get any easier. Even the Super NES was simple despite adding four buttons. It wasn't until the fifth generation of consoles that things started to get a little complicated. The first fifth generation console I remember playing was the Nintendo 64. Again, I didn't have one of my own, so I had to go to a friend's house to play it. My friends were always ahead of me, they always seemed to get things long before I did. But recently I tried to get ahead of everyone else by buying the PlayStation Vita. I'll talk more about this piece of shit next time. The N64 controller was a beast, compared to previous controllers. But aside from its size, its layout was also very confusing. It had three different parts that functioned as a grip. It had a left grip where the D-pad was, a middle grip where it had an analog stick, and a right grip where the face buttons were. I could understand left and right, but what were you supposed to control the middle part with? Your dick? Luckily, this was the start of the 3D generation, so games were generally smart enough to stick with the stick for movement in 3D space. <laughs> stick with the stick. But then came a controller that really made things difficult for me, and really it's the reason why I pretty much stuck to PC gaming for years to come. 
The DualShock PlayStation controller was a pain, and the fact that they've barely changed its design over the years is the reason why I've never owned the PlayStation Home console. It's not so much the buttons or the sticks themselves that are troublesome, but rather their position. The D-pad is placed on the top left near the edge, while the left analog is under it and to the right. I don't have thumbs, instead I use another, much shorter finger to reach the D-pad, but it's not long enough to reach the analog stick. Most games use the analog stick much more than the D-pad, so basically the analog is prioritized and I can't reach it. Luckily, the Xbox controller reverses this, placing the left analog stick at the top left, near the edge, making the Xbox controller my preferred controller. To be fair, I can technically reach the left analog stick on the PlayStation controller, it's just that it's a whole lot more uncomfortable. This wouldn't be a huge problem if I only briefly needed to reach it, but the left analog stick is so important for everything in the game, I have to keep the position for as long as possible, and the longer I play, the more it hurts. Another minor problem with the PlayStation controller is the analog sticks themselves. Unlike the Xbox controller's sticks, which are concave, the sticks on the PlayStation controller are convex. Basically, this means that the PlayStation sticks have an outward bulge at the top, while the Xbox controller sticks have a gap. The reason this is important is because I don't have thumbs. Instead, I use a joint on one finger to control the analog. A concave shape makes it easy for the joint to nestle inside the gap and maneuver the stick. There are a lot of people who don't have or cannot use their thumbs, and in those cases it's a great big help if the sticks are concave. Back before the PlayStation 3 was released, there was another version of the controller which eventually got cancelled in favor of the 6-axis controller, which is now the standard PlayStation 3 controller. The reason for the cancellation? Criticism. I'm talking, of course, about the infamous Boomerang controller. This thing scared the living shit out of me for one simple reason. I was afraid I would stab myself. It speaks volumes when normal people criticize a controller. Just imagine what it would have meant for someone with a disability. Because I have no thumbs, I don't technically hold a controller when I play it. Instead, I rest it on my legs or my stomach. One wrong move with this bad boy, and I'd give myself a C-section. Even regular people rest their controllers on their stomachs once in a while while playing, and I can't be the only one who has thought about this thing just looking downright dangerous and uncomfortable. Even though the DualShock and 6-axis controllers were terribly ill-suited for someone like me, they're still far better than what might have been. So that's it for this time. Thank you for watching, and check back f Uh... Oh, hi, Santa. Hey. Uh, what brings you here? I couldn't help but notice you left a few things out. Uh, like what? Like motion controls. Yeah, well, I, I, I was considering maybe like making this a series, so I suppose perhaps maybe at some point in the future I might make a review or two about... What about peripherals? What about peripherals? Aren't you going to review those? Well, I hardly see the point. I mean, they could just as easily go online and look at the hundreds of other videos available about all kinds of peripherals, ones that I don't even have. Wasn't the whole point of this for you to bring your own unique handicapped perspective to the public? I suppose you're right. I, I guess I could look into it. Perhaps I could do, like, a review or two about... Yeah, you better. Or Santa will come and visit you in the middle of the night. I'll start out simple by talking about the NES controller. And, uh, uh, bah, bah, bah.